the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed.
role that knowledge that fathers and the leaders can begin the teaching of the word into this people. even upon this prayer altar some of you have the call of god upon your life but you cannot go far when your spirit is weak weak you need strength you need capacity this is why you have come In the name of jesus hmm. you see the thing about the spirit of prayer and supplication is that when it rests upon you like the dew of Hammon, it will turn your life around just like that right now I stretch my hands and I declare father from heaven let this unction that can stir men up let the coal of fire rest upon many prayer lives right now take that grace 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 bring them out if you can take that grace everywhere across this auditorium i release that grace upon you take that grace take that grace a new level of prayer capacity Please bring them out if you can. Take that grace in the name of Jesus. This man, are you husband and wife? Hold your hands, two of you. Take that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Take that grace. Bring them out. New level and a new dimension of the grace and the spirit of prayer. For your name is holy, you are holy, holy are you, Lord. For your name is mighty, you are mighty, mighty are you, Lord. For oh, your name is powerful, powerful, powerful. Ela masera na malana na malana kuriara malana malia. Shedererererererebo. I hear you, Moses. I hear. Most high, I truly hail you, most high. I lift you, most high. I worship most high. Shada bakata brande geleka te ba shala daba. Shepra gete barusi atabada. My glory, you lift 
my head but thou O Lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head only you dear Lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my hand thou O oh Lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my hand my glory the lifter up of my life my glory the lifter up of my horn my glory the lifter up of my voice you're my glory the lifter up of my head Marvelous God, mighty one, restore the fire upon our altars for the sake of that which you are doing in this season. Restore. Indeed, there is a voice that says, Restore, 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 restore fire, restore graces, restore, restore hunger restore spiritual appetites in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus listen in this place this moment you are immersed in the glory of God even the glory that excels the glory that makes the glory that imparts the glory that transforms and it is because the maker is making you there is something that the maker is producing out of your life producing out of your destiny there are mantles, there are graces, there are unctions, there are assignments, there are burdens in the spirit waiting for men who can stretch until they sustain the capacity. And some of you, whilst you are listening, the Holy Ghost himself is going to be moving across this place, doing what you saw in your dreams doing what you saw in your visions doing what was said when you were born that they said there was a call upon your life doing what the preacher said would happen to you doing what the fathers in the land have told you God is doing I came to stand in partnership with the servants of God the veterans of the gospel even over this region to help lift up the name of Jesus and to help birth this revival that we have so spoken about. And so, Father, for this end we pray. For this purpose and to this end, grant us grace tonight. Outside of your mercy and outside of your grace, there is absolutely nothing we can do. We obtain grace as we open the hallowed bread we break that bread. We pray that you grant us illumination. Let the book be opened. Let the bread be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. While standing, I'd like us to first honor our father and indeed a father over the east of the Niger. Our bishop, Bishop Onubogu. God bless you, sir. We bless and we honor you. 
in the name of Jesus. And I'd like you to please honor every servant of God, every man, every woman of God here represented, and those in the crowds. Please celebrate the servants of God who labor in word and in doctrine day and night, lifting up the name of Jesus. And then help me honor Reverend Dan and his blessed wife, wonderful people. Hallelujah. Please be seated for a few minutes. We're only here for a few minutes tonight as the Lord will grant us grace. The conference, I'm told, has three sessions in all. And let me lend my voice already in advance to encourage every single one of us. Please pay attention to every one of the sessions because I believe that in them, God is going to be saying a lot. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to start tonight with the book of Ephesians. Um, my, the burden that the Lord put in my heart for this conference this year and for this region is to help provide spiritual strength and capacity for the body of Christ. And it's important for us to know how men become powerful and mighty in this kingdom. There is a lot to be done for the kingdom and for his glory. But it will take a people of power, a people of capacity and stature to be able to birth that which God intends to be done even in this time. Let's start with Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Are we going to have it projected? Let me just use my Bible. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Please turn your Bible to Proverbs 24 and verse 10. I'd like us to read together. I'll be reading from King James. If you have King James especially, I'd like you to join me as we read Proverbs 24 and verse 10 please let's minimize distractions and pay attention the Lord is speaking now Proverbs 24 and verse 10 if you have if you have it let's read together one to read it says if thou faint in the day of adversity thy strength is small one more time if thou fail in the day of of adversity thy strength is small the reason why everything works scientifically is because there is a source of power that powers every gadget if I go to your house and your homes right now I would find your television working I would find your fridge working. Please pay attention. I will find your electronic gadgets, your laptops, your iPads. They are able to work. Not only because they were effectively programmed to work, but that behind those gadgets, there is a connection to a source of power. Is that true? Yes. When the power holding company for any reason are unable to supply power even if you have a fridge that is healthy it will not seem to work is that true even if you have a television that is healthy it may not seem to work when something stops working in your life usually the first place you check is the power source is it still connected to power you have to verify first that it is still connected to power. Then you may now assume that there may be some fault, electronic fault and all of that. But the first place you go to is the place where it is connected to power. Hallelujah. Yes. So the Bible says if you faint, 
the first information from this scripture look at me please is that there is such a time in the life of a man there is such a time in the life of a people called the day of adversity it's in your bible that there is something called the day of adversity the day of adversity is not for troublemakers the day of adversity is not for rebels it is part and parcel of the system of earth there is such a day called the day of adversity and the bible says what you need to survive those times and to survive those days is strength more than wisdom more than revelation you need strength that if you faint in this day whatever that day is we know that that day will stretch you so the bible says if you faint in this day called the day of adversity it says your strength is small hallelujah there are many believers today who do not have the power to continue the power to remain and the power to thrive it's easy to start your christian experience loving the lord rejoicing with the joy of salvation bubbling in victory happy and proud of your newfound faith but as you sojourn in this kingdom and as you face the vicissitudes of life it will take strength it will take stamina it will take capacity in the spirit for you to be able to run number two there are certain levels of spiritual warfare and territorial dominion that requires power and strength in the spirit you will never be able to exert dominion over a territory over systems and structures if your spiritual capacity is small many people do not have the spiritual capacity to be trusted with superior levels of anointings and mantles over nations over systems not because you are a, you are not a christian you may be a well-meaning christian but it takes more than professing your faith in jesus to sustain this capacity every time we talk about revival every time we talk about the move of god every time we talk about what god is doing within a territory the strength to dislodge principalities and powers the strength to dislodge powers that have held destinies down the strength to dislodge spirits that fight the purposes of god within a territory i hope you realize that every territory has controlling powers mandated by darkness to fight everything god they fight civilization they fight prosperity they fight the advancement of the church they fight the excelling of the saints in light they fight the men and the women of god domiciled within that territory they fight favor they fight acceleration they fight membership they fight advancement they fight longevity it says say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways it is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies submit themselves it takes more than a good government for a territory to excel and be able to capture and represent the purposes of god it takes more it takes more than good leaders to be able to have a territory reflect the glory of god it takes more than being a good man of god to be able to have a such an outpouring of salvation healings believers who submit themselves week in week out to endure sound doctrine thereby becoming matured you may have heard me say it that every territory is at the mercy of three things number one the knowledge of the true god number two the presence of teaching priests 
Number three, laws that control the morality of that territory. The Bible says in that time, Israel did not know the one true God and did not have a teaching priest and did not have laws. When these three things are absent in any territory, there is trouble. When there is no knowledge of the one true God, John chapter 17, when you read from verse 3, it says, and this is life eternal, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, your son. This is life eternal, that they may know you, the one true God. Are we together now? So, the land of Enugu, the region of the east of the Niger, you're excelling among other factors, is principally, pay attention, principally dependent on number one, the knowledge of the one true God. Why? Because there are many gods that claim to be God Almighty. The knowledge of the one true God. Number two, the presence of teaching priests. Teaching priests. Men and women who have, through the sacrifice of alignment, mentorship, and stay with the Holy Spirit, have sustained capacity to understand Scripture, the doctrine of Scripture that makes for the maturity of the saints, and now are loving, patient, and benevolent enough to communicate the same to the saints. The level of the spiritual enlightenment of an average believer in a territory is a reflection of the spiritual strength and enlightenment of the voices, the spiritual voices within that territory. So if you find out that a territory is bankrupt of doctrine, the average believer has not attained stature and maturity. We, the men of God within that territory, are to blame. Because everybody, almost everybody goes to church on Sunday. And we go to church every other day. That means if we keep submitting ourselves under teaching priests and we do not see the result of stature and maturity through doctrine, the content of those sermons are faulty. Are we blessed? Yes. When a student submits himself or herself under a medical professor or a medical lecturer, you will want to begin to see the signs of the formation of a doctor. He has not graduated yet, but you know, he's in 300 level, 400 level. He should not, the terms of medicine should not be strange again. He should not see a cadaver and run away. That is proof that it is a doctor who is training him or a professor in medicine who is training him. If the student sits under a carpenter and wants to achieve medicine, after two, three years, you will still see the signs of medical amateurity, immaturity and amateurisms. This is the challenge largely with the body of Christ. So we submit to churches, denominations, which are, and, and that is profitable. But after an appreciable time period, when you handpick believers, you do not find the requisite level of maturity that justifies the time spent under a teaching priest. A believer who spends four, five, six years in church should be able to give us a sound doctrinal explanation of the ministry of prayer. Who is the Holy Ghost? What is prayer? How do believers attain character and maturity in the spirit? What are the foundational doctrines of scripture? How can I grow in the spirit? I have not come to criticize, I have not come to be sarcastic, but I have come to challenge us. If I ask any five believers right now to come out and I line them here and let's begin to interview them, reference from the doctrine of scripture, you will be surprised and even embarrassed at the level of spiritual ignorance that will be in those believers. I am talking of committed church workers. The problem is not zeal. The problem is that there is something wrong with the content of our sermons. 
the name given to the course curriculum that builds and matures believers is called doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means a preset body of truth already programmed to make you become something specific hallelujah but that's not really where i'm going tonight we're discussing the subject of strength if you are looking for a title tonight maybe let's let's give the conference a title so that we can have it arranged ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 that's where we're going to get our title if it is possible say by tomorrow if the media team can help us so that okay beautiful we have this now god bless you i was about to say that that if they can help us so that it can help to save time media projection helps a lot to conserve time it's not to make you ignore your bible it's just to help redeem time are we together ready to read ephesians chapter 6 now look up please keep that scripture there theologically speaking this was paul in ephesus and he began to help mature the believers it was part of his apostolic ministry to travel from region to region and supervise the spiritual growth in partnership with the holy spirit to see how far the believers were faring and if he detected that there were gaps in their spiritual growth he would organize a conference and bring balance to those areas so you notice that he did not go with preset sermons he looked at the needs of the territory and created sermons out of those needs that is a true representation of a, an apostolic grace and so if he went to corinth he saw that there was such an outpouring of the holy spirit but there was carelessness there was lawlessness people were taking some of those wine and they were getting tipsy there was misbehavior people would just get up and prophesy anyhow and he said no 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 he called a conference he said there are things i need to explain to you to the end that all things be done decently and in order that's what brought the book of corinthians first and second corinthians are we together when we get to the uh um what do we call it now ephesians he met the church in ephesus and these were people who were not ignorant people at all and then he began to teach them when you read chapter one two three four he began to teach them what we call their positional advantage the realities that have come to the believer on account of his being grafted through christ through this mystery of the new birth he began to help them understand the implication of being recipients of the life of god how that christ was raised up and then that we have together with him been raised and made to sit far above thrones dominions and so on and so forth then he now began to teach believers their work of faith the character and the attributes that justifies being a recipient of this life he's saying that if you are truly a recipient of eternal life there are implications to it we should see it in your lifestyle the manifestation of character that reflects christ in reality and then he now teaches them the subject of warfare and he helps them understand that ladies and gentlemen in as much as you are christians there is the revelation of your positional advantage there is your work of faith but you need to know how to stand and defend yourself and here's how he puts it six verse ten finally now i'm concluding my conference he says my brethren he was speaking to a people who had been used to listening to him they had submitted themselves for mentorship and growth and development my brethren and then he says and this is where we get our title for this conference be strong in the lord be strong in the lord he says and then in the power of his might just keep that scripture we're only considering verse 10 for tonight the instruction is be strong in the lord you can call tonight part one be strong in the lord part one he's teaching them 
how to be strong is there a possibility of getting amplified can we project amplified otherwise i can i can easily search for that from my 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 um i wish we can get the amplified expression of this to project it be strong in the lord let me just look let me just bring it here because my teaching will require Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 Amplified says in conclusion by the way I don't know if it's too early to do this and please do not find it offensive let me encourage every church and every man of God here in as much as we desire and those who all who are part of the media team of every ministry it is very easy to be able to get the tools to help your preacher preach well are we together don't be offended but it's to encourage you there are softwares and they are most of them are absolutely free all you need to do is encourage your media team to just meet a few people who have gotten the job well done you can send one of the people for training this is why we love the body of Christ. There are people who are excellent as far as media presentation is concerned. You can send one of your people to go there and just learn. You can see something as simple as having an amplified rendition. You see, it makes teaching very effective. And it, it doesn't really cost money. It's just honor to those that God has already helped so that you can bring them. So I think I challenge everyone here who is part of the media of any ministry don't sit down and limit the capacity of that ministry because of pride or it must be through us open up your heart just one 10 15 minutes training and a software is given the same laptop the same gadget and you can now have very superior projections so I expect the media team those who are part of this please after service this night take it as an assignment go and look for the software there are individuals seated here. Some of you are exceptional. Some of you, while sitting here, in 10 minutes, you can get this job done. So please look for those people. Humble yourself and let them help you. I am, I am part of you. This is family discussion. So don't feel embarrassed. Are we together? So that we continue to upgrade on the level of excellence. Let's not keep praying and falling down and then misrepresenting the, the excellence that this region is known for. We can be able to step up. So whoever heads the media, and some of you who are here, if you can help, listen to me, whether you are in the committee or not, after the grace, if you can help, please walk up to Reverend Dan. They will lead you to the media people. Just help them. Let's set this up so that we can have this. It will beautify the house. It will help in efficiency of teaching, and it will ultimately glorify the name of the Lord. If you are in agreement with me, say amen. Right? Generally speaking, is a lesson I want you to learn. Anything you do not know, don't be ashamed of outsourcing it. Don't wait until it comes to meet you. Just humble yourself. Most of the things we need for the next level, they don't need money. They only need honor. Just acknowledge that I may not know this. And you can go and learn from a pastor, from a church. And many people who know are open to teach, but not everybody. They teach people who are ready to learn. Are we together? So let's get back to our discussion. Ephesians chapter 3. Let me read from Amplified here. Here's what it says. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered to your union with him. That was what I wanted you all to see. This is how Amplified puts it. Be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might he says so the bible tells us that we can draw strength from our union with the lord the bible says we can be strong in the lord a believer can build capacity and become strong in the lord you can be strong in and through your human connection when you see a politician that is well connected, you can say this man is a strong man. Oh, what you mean is that he has derived some level of stability 
by reason of his connection to humans. And the Bible says here that believers can be men of stature and capacity in the spirit. And that the basis of that strength is their union with the Lord. Are we blessed? It is true that we can find strength. The strength to do greater things. The strength to walk in more superior spiritual dimensions. The strength to be able to host heavier dimensions of God's glory, God's mantle, God's power. But it is important for us to know how we obtain strength in this kingdom. So if a gentleman gets born again, that gentleman is now in Christ. But he must learn the spiritual dynamics of sustaining strength in the spirit. So that after four or five years, when you see that individual, you can see stamina. You can see stability. When you give birth to a baby, please look up. Many of you here are mothers. When you give birth to a baby, the reason why the baby is not able to walk and run and handle certain things is lack of strength. Is that true? It would be unfair to ask a baby to lift this pulpit. Why? The baby does not have the strength to do it. Even if you want to give that baby this, the baby does not have the strength to do it. No matter how wealthy you are, even if you are a billionaire, you cannot give a baby or a small child a truck or a luxurious bus and hand the key. He does not even have the strength to maneuver the steering. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Strength. There are certain levels of kingdom responsibility. Listen carefully. There are certain prophetic responsibilities that are supposed to be carried out by you in destiny. But the reason why those seasons have not been opened for you yet is because you do not have the strength. There are certain levels of anointings that are supposed to have come upon you, but God himself is withholding them. Why? Because the attacks that follow those anointings, you don't have the strength to survive the attack. So out of God's love, he will withdraw it from you while you are praying and fasting and say more power. God says, no, it is not more power you need. It is more strength and stamina. Can you survive the attack? Because there are attacks that follow mantles, not individuals. If you carry Elijah's mantle, Jezebel will follow you. If you carry Samson's mantle, Delilah will follow you. Delilah does not follow Samson. She follows whoever carries that mantle. So it's not enough to just desire membership. I want 1,000 members, 10,000 members. Do you understand the adversity that comes with that level of unction? Apostle, I want to be a billionaire. And I went to bed and I saw that I'm a billionaire blessing people. Do you know what it takes? The criticism that comes with having that level of wealth and the discipline remaining morally pure with that level of resource. Do you know what it takes? Many people are praying for what they do not have the spiritual capacity to receive. Most times it's not that your prayer is not answered. It's that where the answer should come to is too small. Are we, are we together tonight? Be strong in the Lord. Apostle, I want to receive an anointing and a grace for nations. Do you have the ability to remain healthy and strong as you travel from region to region preaching the gospel? God will not give you an anointing for nations to preach only three times a year. You are joking. Not for that kind of anointing. Do you have the stamina to preach from conference to conference and yet not fall down and collapse? It takes more than physical energy. There is an energizing that is mysterious from heaven. It's called the spirit of might. Is someone learning, please? So the challenge many times is not that God does not want to release these levels of power and these levels of grace and these levels of prosperity. And it's not that what you are looking for is not in your destiny. 
it is true that you are a prophet it is true that you are an apostle but for a long time the experiences that follow that office will never follow you and i'm giving you the diagnosis tonight apostle why have i been praying and it looks like god cannot trust me with this if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small god has weighed you and found out that only 300 members can survive this level of capacity you have if god should multiply that result by two it would destroy you you do not have the spiritual capacity to remain humble to remain diligent to remain disciplined to remain spiritual and you do not have the spiritual capacity to ward off the arsenals of darkness within your territory because i tell you every time you rise in the spirit it's not only angels that see you demons to see you and they say who is this rising in enugu follow this young boy let's not take him for granted and why is he praying every night he does not have a church yet he does not have a name yet but his consistency is sending a, a there is something why is this lady always interceding we that's how we took esther for granted until she became queen who is this lady that would not give up being consistent help your wife there is a grace that is coming on that woman of god in the name of jesus christ say grace new wine new wine coming to her new wine by the spirit of the living god hear me there are many of you as it is now the reason why god has refused to announce you is not because he does not want you to rise you do not know the arsenals of darkness waiting they have been suspecting that the the end time general will come from inugu but where is he and god hid you and said keep praying keep serving in the ushering department keep serving in the ushering department and yet your pride wants you to hold the mic help that lady please keep serving keep serving and god is saying i am hiding you because you do not yet have the strength that being exposed requires man of god there is a reason why god has hidden you he's hiding you because oh moses if pharaoh knows you are the one they are killing children for they will kill you in egypt before you become strong you have not yet met the god of the bible who will give you strength so he will hide you he will hide you using service in the house of god you are called a prophet but god will say walk in the media for five years and while you are feeling insulted you do not know that is god hiding you an heir as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all an heir a man of god a prophet an apostle a businessman now hear me i want to give you a word of caution before we continue this is the reason why premature manifestation is dangerous because when god hides you so that pharaoh does not see you pride will make you believe i am too much for what god is saying i should do i can even preach more than the man of god who is preaching i have while he's preaching i'm seeing visions why should i be cleaning chairs and you graduate yourself from the place of service to pride and expose yourself and in one year you go out of relevance this is a danger people start ministry and in two years three years the devil leaves them and they think they are all right by the fourth year an attack comes and just sweeps them like a tornado because the training that provides capacity to last they did not stay with god can i tell you this dear co-laborers in the gospel let us learn a lesson 
don't ordain and anoint people just because they are diligent and their gifts are working find out from god do they have capacity to endure what they will be exposed to don't expose people just because they are loyal to you don't expose them just because they can preach i know he can preach let him keep cleaning the chairs god is hiding him look up please Many of you here watch football. There are footballers that when you are saving them for the final match, because that, that club site or that nation must win, even though they are professionals, you find out that the last two or three matches before the final match, they will keep them in the reserve. They will be itching to play, but they are hiding them. You know why? Because the coach knows that if anything should happen to this player, before the final match could that be why god is still hiding you because there is a battle coming hey matala could that be why god has stopped you from going on air could that be why god has said sit down just submit to authority and learn pray in the spirit for one minute Shabenda Kaparus Katebras Katia Ekateba Gosha di Balin Samia Sabakata. The entrance of your word give it light and even understanding to the simple. Kebras Katabala Katebras Katila Sinakados Kiresa Katebe Katebras Kotobalakatos Karia Shadabalantas Katebrakia Sitabos. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Please be seated. Even prophet Samuel was about to miss it when he saw Eliab. He said, surely the Lord's anointed. And God said, hey, stop that. That's not how I operate. Apostle, why should I not make the young man a pastor? He's sharp. He's intelligent. He's obedient. He prays every time you call for prayer. I think he's ready for ministry. Let me send him to go and start the other branch. And the Holy Ghost says, not so. Don't do that. He's saying, this young man you see comes from a family with spirit that destroy people when they rise. And he has not yet sustained the spiritual intelligence. Just because the devil has not attacked him yet is because those spirits are activated. The code of operation for those altars is that until you get to a certain level of height, if you have not gotten there, they will be silent. For 20 years, you will think you are free. You will keep rising. There is a level you get to here they come they brought your father down they brought your mother down so before you get there god says come oh samuel you will be a great prophet but let eli teach you something there is something eli has to teach you show us the ancient path Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to walk in the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Hear me? When God begins to hide you, even when you think you are qualified, I'm explaining to you what is happening in the spirit. It is true that you can preach. It is true that you can prophesy. But you do not yet know how the devil throws down great men. So God is saying, so that you will not become a bad testimony, let me hide you until you attend this conference. When you now know what it takes to survive, I will lift you sometimes even overnight. Are we learning? Hmm. Everybody say strength. Shout it, say strength. Capacity. Do you know what it means to remain prayerful when you have ministrations every day? 
Do you know what it means to prepare for an average of three to five sermons per week? And yet your spiritual life must remain alive. And yet you must still manage family faithfully. And yet you must manage your congregation faithfully. Everybody says strength. Do you know what it means to be praying for it, the sick here? Somebody has died in your church. Another person has gone through a tragedy. And everybody is saying, are you sure that this man is not using people for something? And yet you still have the stamina to call upon the name of the Lord. Say strength. The man of God shared with you how that he was doing ministry for 13 years. No fruit of the womb. And yet serving God faithfully. Let me tell you, it takes more than a healthy psychology. You need strength from the spirit. Especially when you are praying for others and they are getting that result. Do you still have the power to go to God in prayer and yet the discussion is not your need. The discussion is, Lord, your kingdom. Your kingdom come and you act as if you have no need. Everybody says strength. Let me show you a mystery tonight and then we'll pray. Isaiah chapter 40. We're discussing the subject of strength. I want to show you a mystery how men contact strength and ascendance in the spirit. If you find and you learn this secret, believe me, you will continue to rise in power. In power. Isaiah chapter 40. Hmm. More love. More power. More of you in my life. More love. More power. More of you in my life. That must be your prayer in this conference. I want more love. More power, more of you in my life. Not just more members, not just more fame. More love, more power, more of you in my life. Strength. Stamina, capacity. Isaiah 40 from verse 28. Isaiah 40, 4, 0, verse 28. It says, Hast thou not heard, hast thou not known the everlasting God the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. So he's giving you an information. In case you have not heard it, he's saying there is a God who does not faint. He is not weary. So we are about to study by what technology has he provided that the, the saints, just like him, can remain strong and not be weary. He's saying God does not have the possibility of weakness and fainting. And there is an understanding that sponsors that result. Next verse. He says, he giveth power. What does he give those who faint? He does not give them an advice. He does not give them an information. When you find your fridge vibrating and it looks like it's shaking and making noise, you know that the current, the voltage is low. Is that true? And many times you may need to outsource power and switch on the gen and you find out everything is wrong. There are symptoms of lack of strength in the spirit. I will show you. You can know 
that your strength is depleting there are indices like a patient there are symptoms of malaria there are symptoms of typhoid fever you can know there are spiritual symptoms that show that strength is failing you the bible says in any case god can give power to the faint and to them that have no might what does he do he increases strength someone say increase my strength prophesy say lord increase my strength to those who have no might to preachers who have no might to businessmen who have no might he can increase your strength next verse 30 it says even the youth now this is a very serious information don't forget what we are discussing to be strong in the lord it says even the youth shall faint so fainting and weakness has nothing to do with backsliding it is part of the human nature and if you do not sustain the spiritual technology to remain strong you may not backslide but you will still lose strength and you will not be able to do so much that no matter who you are no matter how much you love god the tendency for weakness the vicissitudes of life can beat you as a preacher can beat you as a businessman can beat you as a prophet and bring you to a point where even like elijah and even like jonah you can ask for death even the youth shall faint and be weary the young men shall utterly fall now he begins to introduce us to a formula 31 but they that wait upon the lord so if you will be strong in the lord you have to learn to wait upon the lord don't assume you know what i'm talking about they that wait upon the lord your assignment when you are weak your assignment when you see that you do not have capacity for the next level is not to continue god is saying if you ever find out that you have you, it looks like you don't have salmons again it looks like you all your prayer the miracles are recycled nothing new he's saying stop 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 every other thing you are doing is a sign that your strength is limited they that wait upon the lord whatever this means the reward for doing it is number one you shall renew your strength number three that you will mount up with wings as the eagles and by this technology you will run and when men are weary you will not be weary you will walk and yet not faint so when you are still going after 20 years 30 years in ministry 35 years in ministry 40 years and people say by what technology do you continue you will tell them i learned something about the human nature that all men can be weak all men can be weary all men can faint but if i master the art of waiting you will never see an equation of fainting in my life it does not mean i cannot faint it means every time that season is coming i know how to jump it by the mystery of waiting Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength when yours is weak. Draw your strength from your union with him. Hmm. So the Bible gives us waiting as a secret. But what is the implication of waiting? Because for many of us, we think waiting is fasting. When you are fasting, you say, I am waiting upon the Lord fasting is part of the activities that might be captured in waiting but what exactly does it mean to wait upon the lord everybody say waiting <laughs> i love the bible the wisdom that comes from this truth is able to change 
the bible says the law of the lord is perfect reviving the soul dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 